This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. This was assembled with some, uh, some older parts and it does not post, which means it doesn't send a picture out to the monitor. This rig has a Thermaltake Smart BM2 550 watt power supply, which should be plenty for this combination of hardware here, a GTX 750 Ti from EVGA. Oh, it's a shame EVGA doesn't make graphics cards anymore. <laughs> they made some really good ones, especially in this generation and the two generations after that. I really loved the Maxwell and Pascal stuff. Uh, the Ryzen 5 4500 CPU in this rig is paired with an A320 motherboard, I believe 16 gigs of RAM. Now, the very astute of you probably already know or at least suspect what the issue could be here with the no post uh, but we're going to give it the run through anyway this could be an easy one or it could be a super difficult one we've run into our fair share of both here so without further ado let's jump straight into this one right after this stay with me to get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD Key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Hey there, and welcome to the Fix or Flop playlist for those who are new. The premise here is simple. We offer to fix viewer systems in and around Orlando, Florida for free. If you have a broken computer, maybe it doesn't turn on or it doesn't send a signal out, as is the case here, feel free to reach out to us directly via the link in this video's description, and uh, we'll do our best to get back to you as quick as possible and attempt to repair it. You won't pay anything at all. Even if we have to throw hardware into the rig to get it up and running again, Zero dollars and zero cents. I'll either dip into my own pocket and buy a secondhand replacement uh, on a site like eBay, especially if the system's old, I have no choice, I can't buy new, uh, or we'll have vendors send replacement hardware out. They appreciate the exposure. We're able to make videos on this content so we can monetize it. And uh, that's, yeah, just I think it works the best for everyone involved. First things first, we need to power the system on and make sure that what we see in person matches with what the owner is describing. In this case, again, no signal to the monitor, which implies that the system should at least power on. Uh, that's like half the, half the process, let's see. Okay, so it does power on. I can hear the pump. This looks like a, this is a, I don't even know what kind of AIO this is. I do hear it churning fluid though, that's a good sign. Fans in the graphics card are spinning. Chassis fan's not spinning. Oh, it's not plugged in, that's why. But no picture out. So, all right, we're on the same page. Now, those who, um, who I said were fairly astute probably have an idea what could be wrong with this. This being an A320 motherboard, and uh, the fact that it's paired with a Ryzen 5 4500 apparently means we might have a BIOS incompatibility issue. If the A320 board was purchased without the necessary BIOS needed to run Zen Plus CPUs out of the box, then you'll get this right here. A system that looks like it should be working, but you'll get no picture out. And the fact that this is an A320 motherboard from a few years ago means that we do not get the BIOS flashback function uh, built into this board. So if you bought this CPU motherboard combo thinking they'd work out of the box, well, you'd actually need a uh, compatible CPU already in hand to update this motherboard's BIOS with before installing the newer chip. That's the problem a lot of folks ran into in the beginning. Thankfully, a lot of newer boards have the BIOS flashback function or an equivalent of that, so you don't need a compatible CPU already in the socket. This one, though, will definitely need one. That is, of course, assuming that it's a BIOS problem. The owner has no idea. And for that matter, neither do I, just the hunch I have. So it's a bit of a chicken before the egg dilemma. I mean, honestly, in this case, maybe borrow a friend's CPU if you have to. AMD used to send out loaners in dire situations to folks who had no other way of updating the BIOS. Uh, in this case, the fact that we're talking about a Ryzen 5 4500 paired with an A320 board, I mean, I, I'm very doubtful that those two are compatible out of the box. Unless that motherboard was manufactured far, far into the product's life cycle, it's probably running an inferior BIOS revision. But all that said, I wanna try a couple other things first. Usually clearing the CMOS is uh, like literally like a few seconds process. I had to remove the graphics card in this case because well, JBAT1 is right under the 16 lane PCIe slot. Kind of annoying, but anyway, we're already here, so why not? So once this clears, 
We'll try powering the system back on, so we'll try for a post. Uh, and then we'll also check RAM seating. That takes literally seconds. I'll swap uh, his dims out for one of my known working dims as well, just to rule that out. But of course, it has to be difficult just because uh, this cooler is wedged right against the tops of these dims. There's no way to get these dims out without removing the AIO or the radiator assembly at least. And um, that's pretty annoying. So <laughs> I'm gonna go with my gut here. At this point, again, I would be swapping dims out or swapping, uh, yeah, swapping modules just to, just to roll them out because they're so easy to do. But in this case, they're really not. So what I actually wanna try is swapping out, we could roll out the graphics card first just to be on the safe side. I already had to remove that once. Let's go ahead and swap the card out. Again, I still think it's a BIOS issue, but we're just gonna rule out the 750 Ti being an issue because it is an older card. So we're gonna slide our tiny XFX unit in here, no supplemental power needed. And uh, I'm kind of hoping this doesn't work because that would rule out the card and would, again, point to more than likely the BIOS being the problem, which means we don't need to replace any hardware. And sure enough, a whole lot of nothing. So I think this card's fine. Granted, I can't try I can't try different slots on this board because there's only one primary 16 lane slot. The other slot is a very small one that his Wi-Fi uh, card is plugged into. So really no other option there. The, the next step is to replace a CPU. Normally this wouldn't be required again with more modern boards, but uh, we have no choice here. So I'm going to put a native compatible Zen 1 CPU in here. I think the only one I have is a Ryzen 7 1700X and uh, try for a post. If we do get that post, then at that point we can hop into the BIOS, update it, and then swap his newer CPU back in. And hopefully we'll also get a post. That's the plan anyway. Oh my gosh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I can't judge because I've done this before, but can you believe this? That That's literally the sticker, the warning sticker. It's still on the cold plate, which means this cooler is doing literally nothing. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I think it's a really good thing the system never actually worked. <laughs> that's, that's not gonna get you anywhere. The CPU, by the way, is indeed a Ryzen 5 4500. I haven't personally come across too many of these. And just a quick physical inspection, everything on the underside of his CPU looks to be fine. No missing pins, no bent pins, and same goes for the socket, very clean. All right, and uh, let's see if I was right. Let's see if our 1700 works. I have, uh, I have high hopes. If I'm wrong, well, at least it's all on camera, right? <laughs> so, so there's that. I'm expecting a post though. We should, we should get something here because these two chips should work natively with each other. Even though it's an A320 board, which is not something you normally pair with a 1700X. Yes, there we go. That's our post. So that was literally all this was. It came down to the BIOS revision on the board. So we need to hop onto the vendor's website, download the latest BIOS that's compatible with uh, Zen Plus, Zen 2 CPUs. We'll get that on the board and then throw his chip back in. We should get the same result. Now, the only worrying thing here is that there are only a few BIOS revisions posted for this board and none of them mention anything about CPU compatibility. So I'm just gonna choose the latest, uh, the most recent non-beta revision and we're gonna get that on his board. I'm gonna hop into mFlash and this, sh I didn't expect it to shut off. <laughs> Some of these older, cheaper boards have um, slightly slower ways of updating things. So when this powers back up, we should be in the mFlash portal. And from there, we can pull in the new BIOS from our thumb drive. I'm, um, I'm hoping that's where we end up. Okay, entering flash, that, that's a good sign. So that's our SanDisk. BIOS file does not exist. A system will auto. Oh my gosh. Okay, round two. Just, um, yeah, in some cases, again, older boards, I should have known this. Just uh, put the ROM file in the root of the drive that you've connected, and then it should find it no problem. We'll click that and let the BIOS update. During this process, do not turn the system off. Don't touch anything. Just go get a coffee, come back. Hopefully it's sunny outside. You're not doing this in the middle of a thunderstorm. I've, um, I've been there, it's not, it's not pretty. Oh, would you look at that, uh, loaded right into Windows. So the storage drive in here obviously had to be pulled from a working system or maybe the system was working by itself at one point with an older CPU in it. I don't know the full story. That said, let's go ahead and get the 4500 back in his rig and hope that the BIOS update fixed the issue. You can see we've got it repasted. Now we'll just uh, sandwich the block back down. All right, let's uh, quickly check. I'm gonna power on the uh, unit at the rear. Power button up front, 
And I also was, uh, when I was rewiring some things, I realized that this case fan doesn't really have a header. There's only two fan headers on the entire board. And that's one of the downfalls of going with a cheaper A320 chipset. Um, I don't have a splitter or a, a hub that I can give him. I, I looked around for a bit, so it's not the end of the world, but uh, yeah, it's just gonna be sitting there, not turning. Come on, we're gonna get a signal. No signal, no signal. We keep getting the same prompt. Something needs to pop up, please. Yes, there it is, okay. <laughs> All right, so that is a, uh, oh, okay. So don't, don't, it's not even giving me time to, to, to show stuff. That's the 4500 in the rig, and uh, this is Windows loading up now. So that is, that's great news. So last thing we need to do is swap his graphics card back in here that we uh, tried to rule out earlier and clean things up a tad. His system will be ready to go. A few moments later. All right, and here we are with all of his original hardware back in, cable sorted a bit. Let's, I wanna triple check here. Let's make sure that it, uh, Make sure that it posts, and I expect that it will, because this card, I think, was perfectly fine. So it's always a bit of a delay, a bit of, a bit of suspense to deal with, but that right there is what we're looking for. Awesome. So this just came down to a BIOS update, though I am very glad it came in for that, because temps would have been awful and uh, might have even damaged the chip, although it's fairly rare with new chips just because they, they throttle back so hard when they realize that they're thermally limited. Um, <laughs> that cover on the cold plate was definitely not a good thing. So really glad that we were able to take care of that form, even though it was kind of like an inadvertent potential issue down the line. And uh, the only other issue with this build right now is just the fact that that last fan can't receive power. It's not plugged in. A, a simple $2, $3 adapter will take care of that. So looks good, we're into Windows now, and uh, yeah, mission accomplished. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found this at least entertaining, maybe you learned a thing or two. Uh, this is not the first time we've run into a BIOS incompatibility uh, on this channel, uh, specifically in this playlist, so this might not be all that thrilling of an episode to some of you, but uh, it's important to reiterate again the uh, the need to, to verify BIOS revisions on boards that you're buying, especially for some older uh, Zen platforms. So if you are, let's say, buying on eBay a Ryzen 5 3600 and you're shopping for a used B450 motherboard, you're gonna you're gonna have to be very careful about the board that you buy, uh, if especially if it doesn't support something like BIOS flashback, uh, because unless the seller discloses that the BIOS has been updated to support Zen 2 in this case, uh, you could be in this person's shoes here, uh, in need of an older chip to update the BIOS. And uh, yeah, it's just a weird predicament. Like I said, chicken before the egg type deal. So um, glad we could get this one back up and running again. And uh, he's super excited. I already sent him the message and, and showed him the picture of it booted up. So uh, that'd be cool to see his reaction when we give it back to him. Uh, again, thanks for watching. And uh, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this one. Consider subscribing, leaving a like, and uh, supporting us on Patreon, joining our public Discord server, etc., etc. All of that is greatly appreciated. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.